All right, everybody, it's your man King Moves. I'm back in the building, and today I want to discuss this. This, a lot of you may call a meme, and because it's in this format, you I can understand why you might call it a meme. However, the information in this so-called meme is legit. And today, I thought I would show you why it's important for you to not just read something and not verify for yourself. You need to always go back and go through the source yourself and come up with the information. All right. Well, like I said, this is legit. That is literally a quote out of the book. It is missing more words, of course. And the book itself is actually more of a medical uh, pamphlet than an actual book. But this man, Samuel George Morton, MD, this guy, uh, you know, he was somebody that did cranial work. He, he checked cranials and made distinguishments between the races and all of those things. Okay. He was also around during the time while there were still legitimate tribes from the northern to the southern part of the continent, all right? So he wrote this, an inquiry into the distinctive characteristics of the aboriginal race of America. And, um, you know, he really kept it real as far as his descriptions and what he found with the crania. Now, I included in this post... Uh, two links, one to this original book and one to the second edition that came out a couple of years later. All right. This is the original. I've said it before and I'll say it again. My advice to anybody that does real research is to find the oldest information because the oldest is almost always the most honest. So as you can see, this is from the original. It's an old book. And, um, like I said, it's not really a meme. They made it a meme, but it is genuinely what it's supposed to be. And this is what the second edition looked like. A lot clearer, a lot easier to read. But if you read both, you will see the words are the same. So if you do decide to hit the links and check these books out, you will be pleasantly surprised to find out that nothing changed. All right. But let's see what they said. Physical characteristics. It is an adage among travelers that he who has seen one tribe of Indians has seen all. So much do the individuals of this race resemble each other, notwithstanding their immense geographical distribution and those differences of climate which embraced the extremes of heat and cold. The half-clad Fuegans, shrinking from his dreary winter, has the same characteristics and lineaments, though in an exaggerated degree, as the Indians of the tropical plains. And these again resemble the tribes which inhabit the region west of Rocky Mountains, those of the Great Valley of the Mississippi, and those again which skirt the Eskimos on the north. All possess alike the long, lank black hair, the brown or cinnamon-colored skin, the heavy brow, the dove and sleepy eye, the full and compressed lips, and the salient but dilated nose. These traits, moreover, are equally common to the savage and civilized nations, whether they inhabit the margins of rivers and feed on fish, or rove the forest and subsist in the spoils of the chase. It cannot be questioned that the physical diversities do occur, equally singular, inexplicable, as seen in different shades of color, varying from a fair tint to a complexion almost black, and this too under circumstances in which climate can have little or no influence. So also in reference to stature, 
differences are remarkable in entire tribes, which, moreover, are geographically proximate to each other. These facts, however, are mere exceptions to a general rule and do not alter the peculiar peculiar <clears throat> physiognomy of the Indians, which is as undeviatingly characteristic as that of the Negro, for whether we see him in the athletic carib or the stunted Kama in the dark California or the fair Barora, he is still an Indian still and cannot be mistaken for being any other race. The same conformity or of organization is not less obvious in the ostensible structure of these people as seen in the squared and rounded head, the flattened of vertical occiput, the high cheekbones, the ponderous maxillae, the large quadrangular orbits, and the low receding forehead. I have had opportunity to compare nearly 400 crania derived from the tribes inhabiting almost every region of both Americas and have been astonished to find how the preceding characters in great, greater or lesser degree pervade them all. So here you go. This is what he wrote in the 1842 pamphlet, medical pamphlet. Um, Samuel George Morton, M.D. This is what he wrote. And he is somebody who studies the craniums or the skulls of the people. And he wrote it in 1842. So, y'all, do your own research, as always. And I hope that my digging helped some people out here. But until next time, y'all be cool. Come back and hang out with your man, King Moves. Learn something new.